Elliot Oscar Clefbaum and the idea that they may be playing him simply to showcase him despite, I don't know what the even type of injury to describe it as, but Shoulder, despite, I believe. Being in, despite him being a little bit banged up, let's just say. I think a lot banged up. Like I've written a couple times this year that Kessler is really being held together on duct tape and yeah. a couple guys reached out to me to say they think Clefbaum is too. I have written it a couple times here. I don't understand why he's playing. Like I get guys want to play and – you want to wait till someone's officially eliminated, but he's clearly hurting and there's no logical reason for it. And then finally someone said to me, you know, what could be going on here? They're going to make a move this year. But how can it be a showcase if he's injured? He's not going to show well. Well, I think people understand what he was and, you know, so do you need to see him now. That's, that's the point. I that don't, I don't the, get. Like if, whole, if you're running him out there hurt, what's the value for anybody? Certainly not for Clefbaum, not for the Oilers. And, I, and not for, I don't know. I, you know what? Honestly, Jeff, there's so many questions about this thing that I have. I can't answer this question, but the fact is that I think that teams were scouting him, and I think people were looking at him, mm-hmm. and I think they got to sign Darnell nurse. Who's had a really good year. And I think clefbaum has got value. He had a great year last year. He scored 12 goals. He's got a good contract. I do think people are looking at him. What happens to Edmonton in the offseason? You know, that's a great question. You know, I watched – I didn't see it on Saturday night because I was in uh, Maryland, but I watched the interview after that David and Cassie and Doug one? did with Nicholson. Yeah, it was really good. Great to have you along, David Amber, Cassie campbell Pascal, Doug McLean, and, yes, the CEO of the Oilers Entertainment Group, Bob Nicholson. Uh, thanks for joining us, and congratulations on this amazing facility. Uh, I've got to talk a little bit about how it's been a tough season, obviously, for the on-ice product. And, you know, we'll start with this, Bob. Over the next, you know, month here during the season and the, and the summer months as well, what, what's the one main thing you're hoping to accomplish here? You know what, I, right now uh, we're, we're disappointed with the year. There's no question about it. We're going to take our time. Uh, we're going to make sure that we really evaluate every part of the hockey uh, operation as well as everything uh, within our organization. It's disappointing. We have a plan, and we're going to get it right. You know, Bob, I remember when you first went from vice president to president of Hockey Canada, and it wasn't always easy, and then all of a sudden you built it to this enterprise, and there was gold medals after gold medals. And I wonder, looking back at that and looking back at last year, do you think that this team didn't face enough adversity last year? It almost came a bit too easy. You know what, that's a real good point, Cassie. You know, we really, everything worked out for us. Uh, all our players uh, played extremely well. And expectation was really high in the summertime. And we couldn't get that under control. And that hurt us coming out of the gate. But we have some really good pieces. And I think the key, you know, people want change. But I, I, I'm going to be patient. Uh, I want to make sure that we really do a thorough evaluation and get it right because we do have a lot of good things and we don't want to destroy that. Uh, Bob, one of the, the most important things during a tough year like this is motivating your management team, keeping them focused, dealing with that side of things, and then also dealing with an owner that would be very disappointed in how the season's gone. Yeah, you know what, uh, the relationship with uh, Peter Shirelli and uh, Keith Gretzky has been very good. We, you know, we're going to keep the plan. And in fairness, I talk to Daryl Cates all the time. Uh, Daryl Cates asks uh, tough questions, but he's been really fair with me. I couldn't ask for a better situation to get it, have an opportunity to turn this around. Bob, it's such a passionate fan base here, getting a chance to interact with some of the fans. What's the message to the fans who, who you know, Preaching patience is great, but for a lot of them, they're saying it's been so long now since we've kind of tasted what we want. Yeah, you know, I, I came in and it's been a number of years. This is my third year. We had a great year last year. But we did change coaches a lot here, and we did make a lot of changes. And, you know, I really feel that, hey, when you make a change, make sure you make a better change. Don't just make change for change. And we're not to that point to make the change, but we will be here at some time and we'll, the fans will fans will buy in if they can understand the plan once we make those changes you know i, I thought nicholson was dropping a lot of hints there and you got the sense that he wanted to say a bit more but he was really holding himself <laughs> back he was got a long history with cassie and uh you know i i think he wanted to say some more stuff and but the thing that really struck me is that they're going to make changes but they're not going to make changes for the sake of doing it and he said, we've fired a lot of people here. And I think he would prefer to keep Peter and Todd. That's the sense I got. But I think that may be decided by who else is available. Like, what if Barry Trotz is available? What if Joel Quenville is available? And the other thing, too, is I don't know really who's making the final call here. Like, who do you think is making the final call in Edmonton? 
by way of title, it should be Pete Chiarelli. Or Bob. Or the owner. Didn't the owner want a coaching move during the season? Wasn't it after that Dallas game? Yeah. It there's was that road trip. There's been some rumbling about that. This year you're talking? This year, yeah. And, yeah. and Wayne, Wayne Gretzky was on the road trip. and There's been a rumor about that. I don't know if it's true, though. Daryl Cades, he doesn't come out very much. Like it, It's hard to check that kind of thing. Every but, time I talk to anyone there, it's Cates is fuming. Yeah, Cates, I, I, Cates is fuming hey, about this season. I agree with that. Somebody told me last year they were the highest revenue team in the NHL. And they're not going to be that way this year because that arena is such a cash cow. Yeah. And they're not going to be there this year. And I do believe that Daryl's upset, but who's making the call? Is it Cates? Is it Nicholson? Is it Shirelli? Is it Wayne Gretzky? Is it somebody else? Like nobody really seems to have the answer to that. And what's Paul Coffey's role here? My guess is he ends up coaching, but I don't know if that's head coach or assistant coach. Scouting in Ontario. I want, like, when I heard that, I was I like, know, I'm saying. could he be a GM? And I, I've been told he's got no desire to be a GM. I think he wants to coach. Right. So that's my biggest question is who's making the call? How close do you think they are to turning it around? Knowing the composition of this team, knowing the They're woes. not as bad as they played this year. I refuse to believe that. They need wingers. They need wingers. They need wingers But bad. that should be, in theory the easiest thing to find. Now, I will say this. I think one of the things they're going to have to figure out is how to convince Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl that they shouldn't play together. They want to play with each other. Yeah, they but I think... They on the same line. I think that's got to change. Eventually. You've got to show them Pittsburgh and say, guys, why did they win two Stanley Cups back-to-back? Because you got Crosby on one and Malkin on another and... You get someone like Kessel, and he plays on a third. Heiserman Fedorov, keep going. Like you gotta, these, these are the, those the guys are going to have to learn that they can't play together. Maybe in certain situations, Crosby and Malkin play together on the power play. Mm-hmm. Maybe you put them together on a line here and there, but generally they got to play apart. They need a save, and you, you're just hoping this. Is, this, this, this is just the outlier year. For the net miner, and he comes back like he did last season. Well, look, like, yeah, I agree with you. Talbot had a rough year, but you look at their team this year. You know, Larson was worse than last year. Clefbaum, because of the injury, was worse than last year. Sakara, who was you know Injured a pretty big player for them, was out for half the year. Sometimes you have to bet on our guys are not going to be that bad again. Like things are going to be better next year. But you're not going to go into next season with the same lineup. No, no, that's why I wonder like this, about this, that's why I wonder about the Clef bomb thing. But then again, the, the idea of you know, we're not going to make changes just for the sake of making changes. I mean, you've got a fan base that's torches at the Castle Gate right now. Yeah, like that volcano needs a virgin. Like you know, I, I got happen. in enough trouble last week for what I said about Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? The the fun, some of the funniest tweets I got back about it was Edmonton fans saying, "Wait, we're worse than they are." Hang on, how dare you? We're yeah. number one. You know, I get that in Edmonton's case. They've what, missed the playoffs what eleven in the last twelve years. Like yeah. you know, I think in that situation, one year out of ten, you get a good season. Like it's got to end. I, I think in that situation, you've earned the right to be upset if you support the team and you support the organization. Again, Jeff, my biggest question about them is. At the end of the day, who's making the calls here? Mm-hmm. Whose choice is it? And until you know who that is, it's very difficult to predict what they're going to do. 